Hi friends, welcome to Microbiological Concepts. I welcome everyone who is here to watch my video. And anyone who is watching my video without subscribing my channel, click the subscribe button and bell button so that you will get notification if I post my next video. Okay, thanks. Let's go into the video. Today I am going to talk about a most important person, Robert Koch, who creates a milestone in the field of microbiological research. If you didn't see my previous video, I will give you the link in the description box. So please go and watch the video to get more information about the history, what has happened before the Robert Koch. Robert Koch is considered to be the father of modern bacteriology. He was born in Klaasthal in Germany on December 11, 1843. And he was the third child of 13 children to his parents. And he got graduation from high school in the year 1862. After that, at the age of 19, he undertook medical studies at the University of Göttingen. After the completion of his medical studies, he first practiced in Hamburg and Lagenhagen and later he moved to the German town of Reykjavik, which is now a part of Poland. And he became the district medical officer for the rural community of Holstein. At that time, he found out that it was not his true passion. That is, the work is not his passion. He was interested in doing research. So, he converted his home into a laboratory. And he spent most of the time in his homemade laboratory which was equipped with an expensive microscope. And he avoided to treat the sick patients. So he was the one who studied the relationship between the bacteria and the disease. So first he studied the anthrax disease. You all know that anthrax is a disease which is, which is caused by a pathogen baseless anthraxis. It is a gram positive rod shaped spore forming bacteria. This anthrax disease mainly affects the goats, cattle, sheep and horses but it does not affect directly the humans. But once the humans get in direct contact with the disease causing animal means they also get sick with this anthrax disease. That is, this disease does not spread from one person to another and it is not a contagious disease. So, uh, he, uh, Robert Koch used the criteria which was proposed by his former teacher Jacob Henley to study the relationship between the baseless anthrax and anthrax disease. And he published his findings in the year 1876. What he did isolated microorganism from the deceased animal and then he uh, grow these microorganisms in a pure form using a streak plate technique. After getting the pure form of a, a microorganism or pathogenic microorganism, he again infected that uh, pathogenic microorganism to a healthy mice. So after injection, the disease developed in this uh, new mice also that is the second animal and uh, again this animal get infected and uh, this animal also dies. So again he isolated the pathogenic microorganism from the second animal in a pure culture and st he studied the relationship between the first and the second organism and he found out that the first organism was similar to that of the second organism. So he did his experiments in a series of 20 mice. He proved the casual relationship between a microorganism and a specific disease and uh, he uh, described it as Koch postulates. The proof of Robert Koch that a baseless anthrax is which caused anthrax disease was independently confirmed by Louis Pasteur and his co-workers. They discovered that after the burial of the dead animals also, 
the spores survived for nearly 48 uh, years and were brought to the surface by the earthworms. Then the healthy animals then inject, ingested the spores of the bacteria and they became ill. What are coach postulates? He proposed four postulates. The first one is the suspected pathogenic organism should be present in all the cases of the deceased and absent in from the healthy animals. So the pathogenic microorganism is present only in the deceased animal and it is absent in the healthy animal. It is the postulate number one. The, what is the second postulate? the suspected organism should be grown in pure culture. So, he isolated the microorganisms from the deceased animal and healthy animal and grew it in a pure form using the streak plate technique. Then again he inoculate the healthy animal with that of the suspected pathogen. So, the animal became deceased again. That is the postulate number 3. The cells from a pure culture of the suspected organism should cause disease in a healthy animal. The fourth postulate is the organism should be re-isolated and shown to be the same as the original. So what he did in his experiment, first he isolated the pathogen from the disease animal and the cells from the healthy animal also. The healthy animal does not contain the pathogenic microorganism so he the pathogenic microorganism which was isolated from the diseased animal he grew it in a pure form and again injected into a healthy mice so the second animal got infected by anthrax disease and it died again he isolated the suspected pathogen from the diseased animal and grew it in a pure form both the microorganism isolated from the first animal and the second animal was found to be the same. After anthrax, he studied about the disease causing agent of tuberculosis disease. So, in 1880, while he was working as a government advisor with the Imperial Department of Health in Berlin, at that time he was very interested in doing the tuberculosis research. So, during that time, it was widely believed that this tuberculosis was an inherited disease. But Koch did not agree this. So, he did experiments with guinea pigs and te tested with his four postulates and found out that the tuberculosis was caused by a bacterium and it is not a hereditary disease. So, he got Nobel Prize for this in the year 1905. Because uh, Koch was the first to found out that the tuberculosis was caused by a rod shaped bacterium, mycobacterium tuberculosis in the year 1884. And this Koch postulates was quickly became the cornerstone of connecting many diseases with the causative agents. First he did anthrax, then he studied about the tuberculosis disease, then he studied about the cholera disease also. And he uh, also attempted to produce a drug or developing a drug uh, to treat this tuberculosis disease. So he found out tuberculin drug which can treat the tuberculosis disease. For instance, some organisms like Mycobacterium leprae which is the causative agent of leprosy cannot be isolated in pure culture. After anthrax and uh, tuberculosis disease, uh, coach turned his attention towards the cholera disease. So he began to conduct his res research in Egypt and hope to isolate the disease causing agent. But he was not able to complete the task before the epidemic in Egypt ended. So he at that time he then travelled to Bombay and he did research in Grand Medical College where he was able to determine the causative agent of cholera that is a Vibrio cholerae causing the cholera. But this bacterium was originally been isolated in 
1854 by the Italian anatomist Filippo Pasini but the exact nature and his results were not widely known at that time and coach developed many techniques for studying the microbi- microbial pathogens the first one is the pure culture so during his studies on the bacterial diseases it became a necessary one to isolate the bacterial pathogens into, into a pure form so he developed the pure culture technique to isolate the bacterial cultures in a pure form so for that um, he coach robert coach used a liquid medium to grow the bacterial culture and he then serially transferred the uh, liquid culture Uh, and the microorganisms into a pure form but this process was a tedious one and uh, this uh, the result is also not a consistent one so uh, he observed that the pure cultures could best be achieved by using a solid medium the the results obtained by while you, uh, growing the microorganisms in liquid medium is not a consistent one so he plan to do the cultures in a solid medium like a potato so he uh, again uh, grow the microorganisms in the potato medium but recognized at the t- same time that most solid media would not support the growth of my- pathogenic microorganisms so he at that time he recognized that uh, all the microorganisms cannot grow in that potato media so he added gelatin to the liquid culture medium to make it solidify and then again he pour the medium into the petri plates after inoculation the separate bacterial colonies which are developed on the surface of the solidified medium there are some disadvantages while culturing the medium because the gelatin was not an ideal solidifying agent so it can be easily digested by many bacteria and it can melt at temperatures above 28 degrees so this gelatin also has some disadvantages so he need to search for another alternative so to overcome the disadvantages of uh, gelatin a better alternative was provided by fanny uh, who is the wife of walter hesse Uh, Walter Hesse is the one of the assistant of Robert Koch. So what she suggested, she suggested the, to use agar as a solidifying agent because at that time they are using agar to make jellies. So Koch, Robert Koch uses agar as a solidifying agent. This agar did not melt until it reaches the temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. So before they are using gelatin it uh, it melts at 50 degree centigrade but this agar did not melt until 100 degree centigrade so they are after that they are using agar as a solidifying agent coach uh, developed many media, media nowadays we are using nutrient broth and nutrient agar which was developed by robert coach and another important tool which was developed in the coach laboratory was the petri dish which was uh, originally discovered by R- richard petri so it got the name petri dish and uh, nowadays we are using the petri plates for culturing the microorganisms coach also observed the phenomenon of autoimmunity in the year 1900 what is autoimmunity autoimmunity is the system of immune responses of an organism against its own healthy cells and tissues that is it can destroy its own cells and its tissues some of the autoimmune diseases are rheumatoid arthritis inflammatory bowel disease and type 1 di- diabetes mellitus what is rheumatoid arthritis joint pain that is uh, it uh, the, in this rheumatoid arthritis the uh, your immune system the attacks the healthy cells of your body by mistake so it causes the inflammation in the joints of hands wrist and knees if you have any doubts you can write your 
doubts in the comment section below okay thanks for watching if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe share like and click the bell button if you have any more doubts you can write your doubts in the comment section below thank you